In October 2002, key management and conservation stakeholders involved in Australia's southeast trawl fishery spent two days at sea attending an offshore trawl fisheries workshop with commercial trawl fishers and researchers. The workshop, considered as a first of its kind, was conducted on the Australian Maritime College's 35 metre fisheries training vessel, the Bluefin, and run out of the New South Wales fishing port of Eden. CNET, a National Environmental Fisheries Extension Program, and the South East Trawl Fishing Industry Association, known as CETFIR, were responsible for organising and facilitating this fisheries education and extension workshop. Generous workshop support was offered by Ocean Watch Australia, the Commercial Seafood Industries Environmental Watchdog, and the Australian Maritime College and the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation, known as FRDC. Each year, the South East Trawl Fishery catches over 30,000 tonnes of fish, valued at nearly $70 million. The fishery supplies the Sydney and Melbourne markets with the bulk of their fresh fish. Vessels have been active in this fishery since the early 1900s and at present there are around 80 vessels using demersal trawl nets to target a range of fish species including blue grenadier, orange ruffy, redfish, pink ling and flathead. Trawling effort in the fishery occurs on the shelf and upper slope waters around Australia's southeast coast. Eden on the south coast of New South Wales, Lakes Entrance in eastern Victoria, Hobart on Tasmania's south coast and Portland in Victoria's far west are all major ports in the South East Trawl Fishery. The Australian Fisheries Management Authority, known as AFMA, is the Commonwealth Agency responsible for the fisheries management and regulation. Currently this is achieved by a combination of individual transferable quotas, limited entry, area restrictions and gear restrictions, including a minimum mesh size of 90 millimetres. CNET and CETFIR worked collaboratively to develop the workshop's information transfer concept, aiming to give government and non-government stakeholders the opportunity to build on their understanding of the industry. Holding an education workshop on board a trawler proved to be an ideal method of demonstrating recent advances in trawl fishing technology including research progress to reduce catches of small and unwanted fish, known as bycatch. Commercial skippers from the fishery, a research expert, fishery scientist Dr Ian Nucky, and the Victorian CNET officer were all on board the Bluefin for the workshop, facilitating the transfer of information, answering stakeholders' questions, and sharing their knowledge of the commercial trawl fishing industry and its operations. The workshop had two main objectives. The first was to provide participants with a better understanding of industry operations through a first-hand view of trawling practices, fishing gear technology and some of the ecological interactions that can occur during fishing. The second objective was to help with the extension of recent gear development research aimed at reducing bycatch in the fishery. The workshop offered stakeholders the chance to see this technology in practice on a trawler a rare and invaluable opportunity for all participants. The Bluefin departed Eden's Twofold Bay early morning, with a diverse group of 14 South East Trawl stakeholders gathered on board, accompanied by industry skippers, researchers and the Bluefin's crew. Three skippers from the South East Trawl were present and provided valuable local advice and expertise during trawl demonstrations. Setfield's explanation of trawlers, trawl fishing gear and commercial fishing practices were also vital to the workshop's success. The agenda for the overnight workshop included practical trawl demonstrations showcasing modified trawl gear developed during an FRDC funded project to reduce bycatch of both small and unwanted fish in the southeast trawl. The Bluefin's viewing platforms were ideal during trawling demonstrations with stakeholders able to safely observe operations and fishing gear from its wheelhouse, upper deck and back deck locations. During each trawl shot, industry skippers and researchers provided information to stakeholders on gear components and the setting and hauling process, while answering questions relating to trawling operations and modified nets. Throughout the workshop, the Bluefin used a custom designed trawl net with twin cot ends or catch bags rigged for the demonstrations. 
This double-ended trouser trawl enabled comparisons of catch selectivity to be made between the different cod end mesh types that are now available to South East Trawl skippers. The comparisons highlighted the catching efficiency of each mesh type. After sorting the catch on the bluefin's deck, workshop participants were able to make a visual comparison of the reduced levels of bycatch and the impact on catches of commercial species. In this instance, the catch from a 90mm diamond mesh cod end is being compared with a catch from a 100mm square mesh cod end. Throughout these comparisons, the onboard researchers and skippers who were initially involved in developing this gear detailed the potential benefits and some of the difficulties associated with industry vessels adopting modified cod ends best suited to their operations. The trouser trawl demonstrated selectivity for some of the different sized diamond mesh and square mesh options now being used on industry trawlers. Importantly, it was highlighted to workshop stakeholders that a variation in mesh type also impacts on the catch of some commercial species. Research in this area is to continue in 2003, aiming to identify the most appropriate gear types while reducing bycatch in each area of the fishery. Other workshop activities included a number of research presentations and discussions scheduled between trawl demonstrations in the Bluefin's wheelhouse and dining areas. Fisheries researcher Dr Ian Nucky presented a summary of the progress made in FRDC's Project 98204, which aimed to modify trawl gear and reduce bycatch in the southeast trawl. Dr Nucky elaborated on the nature of this work and the many commercial and non-commercial species caught in the fishery. Research progress was discussed with reference to the modified cod end trawl demonstrations provided throughout the workshop. Again, the industry skippers made a valuable contribution during these discussions by bringing their real life experiences to the forum and explaining scenarios faced when using this gear in commercial operations. Discussions about the interactions of fur seals with commercial vessels in the fishery were also held during the workshop. The importance of minimising seal interactions was raised after the capture of two seals during the workshop and highlighted as a key issue by Setfia's representatives and a number of stakeholders on board. Setfia President Terry Moran explained to stakeholders about Setfia's code of practice that is used by industry vessels to assist in minimising the incidental bycatch of seals. Dr Nucky then put the issue into perspective, providing workshop participants with scientific advice on seal interactions recorded through the Trawl Fisheries Integrated Scientific Monitoring Program. Avoiding seals is a priority for both fishers and stakeholders in the South East Trawl, and this important issue is now being managed by the National Seal Strategy Group and coordinated by the Bureau of Rural Sciences. CNET has received in-depth positive feedback from stakeholders who ventured to sea on the bluefin. This feedback has highlighted how the workshop played an important role in contributing to the knowledge of stakeholders involved in the management of the fishery. Examining, handling and sorting the catch fresh from the cod end was an excellent opportunity for stakeholders not familiar with the working deck of a trawler. A number of participants also took part in some basic fisheries research activities, including removing and collecting odalis for fish ageing and determining sex and measuring fish, all standard biological procedures that help us to understand our commercial fisheries. This hands-on approach provided an ideal opportunity for all involved to interact, while learning more about operating procedures gear types and catches across the industry. First-hand experiences promote a genuine interest among stakeholders and with expert advice close at hand there were plenty of questions raised and answered. Many industry experiences were shared while pooling a wealth of expertise with a commendable level of participation from those not familiar with life at sea.